Chapter 9, Study Guide, page 7. Well, in our previous two videos, we looked at first, glycolysis. In the second video, we looked at the Krebs cycle in the mitochondria. And in this video, we need to look at something called the electron transport chain. Keep in mind that the goal here is to figure out how do we convert the energy of the food we eat into the energy of ATP. Well, up to this point, you might say, it doesn't seem very efficient. We broke down a glucose molecule, and so far we've made a total of four ATP. Well, the electron transport chain here is where we can get some serious ATP. We've completely broken apart all the carbon atoms of the glucose molecule, but we still have all those electrons that we are carrying from NAD. NAD took some electrons from glycolysis. It took some electrons from the Krebs cycle. And let's imagine all those NADs bringing their electrons to the electron transport system on the inner membrane of the mitochondria. Here's the electron transport system on the inner membrane of the mitochondria. This would be the matrix. Here's the intermembrane space between the inner and outer membrane. Here's the outer membrane, and here's the cytoplasm of the cell. Well, when NAD brings its hydrogen atoms to the first protein in the electron transport chain, it drops off its electron. Of course, then it becomes NAD. And the protein, the way I think of it is, it doesn't accept the proton that was with the electron. So that's just dumped here. Because remember, the hydrogen atom is made up of one proton and one electron. But the first protein in the electron transport system here doesn't really receive the proton, it just receives the electron. The proton is or the hydrogen ion is released here into the matrix. Let's label some things. What is this? This is a protein pump. It's a protein molecule embedded on the inner membrane of the mitochondria, and it is a hydrogen ion pump, and we'll call it hydrogen ion pump number one. The reason it's called a hydrogen ion pump is because when electrons travel through it, it pumps hydrogen ions. So these electrons that were dropped off by NAD, we can imagine them traveling through pump 1 to this structure, which is called ubiquinone. I suppose we'll label it, even though I don't expect you to remember that name. Here's the electron. Well, what happened there? Electron traveled through pump 1. Pump 1 pumps a hydrogen ion from the matrix to the intermembrane space. Now, this electron travels through the ubiquinone and ends up over here in a protein, which is a hydrogen ion pump also but we're going to call it pump 3. Say, where's pump 2? There really isn't a pump 2. There's a protein in between pump 1 and pump 2, but it doesn't pump anything, so it's not called pump 2. Um, <coughs> that's not shown on this diagram, and it's not shown on most diagrams in your book either. So this electron then moves through pump 3, this little molecule up here, called cytochrome C again. Don't worry about the name. It's an electron carrier. Now, as the electron travels through this protein, it pumps another hydrogen ion out of the matrix into the intermembrane space. So the pump is acting similar to the motor in our fuel cell example. 
Remember, moving electrons give off energy to do work. And in this case, the work that they do, that they allow to happen, is the pumping of hydrogen ions. Now, this electron ends up coming over here to our protein hydrogen ion pump number four. Uh, you'll see that it doesn't seem to have anywhere to dump off its electron. It's going to dump it off here into the matrix. But in order for that to happen, there has to be an electron acceptor there. And the final electron acceptor here is oxygen gas. And oxygen gas and four hydrogen ions, when they receive these electrons, they form two molecules of water. And so that's the end of the line for the electrons that started out in glucose and now ended up on the oxygen to make water. And when that electron passes through pump four, pump four pumps a hydrogen ion out of the matrix into the intermembrane space. Now you can see that hydrogen ions are being pumped out of the matrix plus any of them that are here are also being used to make water. What that amounts to is we're going to end up with a low hydrogen ion concentration in the matrix and a high hydrogen ion content or concentration in the intermembrane space. So after a while you could imagine, boom, you just keep pumping hydrogen out here. Now, we rem just finished the chapter talking about diffusion. Well, if you get a high concentration of hydrogen ions out here and a low concentration of hydrogen ions in here, they're going to want to diffuse back into the matrix down their concentration gradient. But they can't get through the membrane. Ions can't get through the phospholipid bilayer. So they have to go through this molecule called ATP synthase. Now, ATP synthase, this molecule's name ends with ACE, which means it's an enzyme. And it's called synthase, which means it's an enzyme that probably synthesizes something. What does it synthesize? It synthesizes ATP. We can consider this facilitated diffusion because as these hydrogen ions look for a way through the membrane, they go, can't get through, can't get through, can't get through, can't get through. Oh, there's a channel protein. Boom. Comes through. And the energy released as the uh, hydrogen ions diffuse down their concentration gradient through ATP synthase, that energy is used to rephosphorylate ADP into ATP. And I'm going to put 32 here. You can rephosphor with the energy released from the electrons that have come from that original glucose molecule. You can rephosphorylate 32 ADP into 32 ATP as they travel through the ATP synthase molecule. Now, on this, underneath this video, I mean, underneath this video, yes, there's a link to a McGraw Hill video showing this, which will be a nice animation for you. A couple things I want to point out here again. We always talk about where were the electrons at the beginning of this story and where are they at the end. Well, the at the beginning of this story, and we'll write it up here, um, the electron donors the electron donor was NAD. That's what brought the electrons NADH. That's what brought the electrons into the story. What, what, where did they end up at the end of the story? What is the uh, final electron acceptor? Well, the final electron acceptor is oxygen gas down here. You breathe that in. That's the only reason you breathe. You breathe in oxygen so it can travel to the f number four hydrogen ion pump on the inner membrane of your mitochondria and receive these electrons from pump four. If that doesn't happen, 
you can't build up this concentration gradient because if electrons can't leave pump four, it stops the flow of all these electrons. If you stop the flow of these electrons, you stop the creation of this hydrogen ion gradient across this inner membrane. If you stop the concentration gradient from forming, you won't have these hydrogen ions moving through ATP synthase, and you won't be making ATP. No ATP, no life. Uh, so what is suffocation? Suffocation is depriving the electron transport chain of its final electron acceptor. And then you die because you, you're not making enough ATP. Okay, good.